It's been uh, an, an incredible turn of events. What we've seen uh, really in one week's time since the Attorney General's report has been released, you know, revealing what we had all heard about, but now what we all knew were the, the, the vivid details of the governor's sexual harassment against state employees and, and many other people, many other New Yorkers. And, uh, and now today we have the governor's announcement of resignation, words I never thought I'd hear out of someone that clung to power so, uh, you know, with, with, with such authority, someone that ruled this state with an iron fist and, and ran government through fear. Uh, but the governor ran out of allies. There was no one standing up for him. There was no one for him to turn to, and even his own party, who was complicit and stalled this impeachment inquiry that our party, or the Republicans, first called for on February 11th, based on the obstruction of justice in nursing homes with the deaths due to the governor's executive order. Uh, they stalled and they stalled and they stalled, and finally, uh, they could stall no more, and this, this impeachment was going to move forward. The governor had no choice but was forced to resign or be removed from office. Uh, we have, uh, I, I, I want to call for this impeachment investigation to continue. The taxpayers have already paid the bill. We've already invested the resources, and the Assembly has taken their sweet time working on a broad-based investigation. It also includes uh, the nursing home cover-up. It includes the governors uh, using official state resources for his book deal where he enriched himself to the tune of $5.1 million. All of those things are supposedly in this investigation. You know, it's not enough to have Andrew Cuomo just resign. We need to, you know, wipe the Cuomo administration out of our government. There were officials in his administration that have wrongdoing on their hands. There are people that we need to know what their role was as these decisions were made because a, a governor cannot act without staff and he cannot act alone. They have to have support. And we need to know what the role that was played by people like Melissa DeRosa or Rich Ass Party or uh, you know, the various other uh, people, Robert Mojica, the people in the administration or even the Lieutenant Governor herself, Kathy Hochul, who's soon to be governor. What role did they play in the nursing home you know, situation and scandal that led to 15,000 New York seniors' deaths? What role did they play in the execution of the governor's memoir and his contract and the negotiations that went forward with that? Were crimes committed in this administration? And furthermore, an impeachment should continue so that Andrew Cuomo will never serve as governor of this state again or in public office in this state again. We need to wipe the slate clean and Republicans have been working very hard, crisscrossing the state, and trying to hold this governor accountable. I know I've been doing it for the last two years. Uh, at times, that was a very lonely mission. When the governor's approval ratings were sky high after COVID-19, in, in his daily response to that, no one wanted to speak ill of the governor. But there were things going on on a daily basis that he needed to be held accountable for. And we did that, and I'm proud that we did that, and I'm so grateful that others joined that effort because facts were revealed through this. This administration is crooked. This administration has been corrupt, whether it's the Buffalo Billion, you know, the nursing home scandal, and, and you could tick down the list of all the various things that have happened on Andrew Cuomo's watch. They've destroyed the criminal justice system since he's been governor. Elimination of cash bail has led to a rise in crime that New York State has never seen. This chapter now comes to a close, but it needs to be have an exclamation point after it. They need to make sure that this governor never serves again uh, and continue this impeachment trial. Uh, it needs to happen, and I think that we need answers from the New York State Assembly uh, going forward if they're going to continue that investigation. But I'd be happy to take any questions at this time from anyone in the media. Nick, I spoke with one Republican state lawmaker who said he wants the impeachment investigation to end. His argument was we're continuing to spend state tax dollars. The governor will likely have no political power in the future. I know you gave your reasoning just now, but curious about the, uh, doesn't seem like there's much unison among state Republicans about the impeachment investigation. I mean, that, you know, that whoever that is is entitled to their opinion. This governor still has $18 million in his campaign war chest. He is teaching a master's class on how to hold on to power for dear life. And he did that up until about 1230 this afternoon. Uh, I, I think that this needs to be seen through. 
Um, there are uh, were many people that called for his resignation, impeachment, what have you. I, I think that there were crimes committed, serious crimes, much more uh, than we've been detailed in the Attorney General's report. Those are very serious situations, and there'll be civil uh, punishments, probably the cases that come up that the governor will be held accountable to at a civil level and probably have to pay fines or restitution to those individuals that he wronged. But we, we have 15,000 fam uh, you know, victims' families that want answers, that deserve justice. And this uh, obstruction of justice with the nursing home, it's been, it's been lost from the headlines because you know the sexual harassment was more salacious. It was something more, they got more television viewers. But those families continue to grieve. Those seniors were robbed of the dignity of their final moments and having a loved one at their side because they were sentenced back into nursing homes with no input from the families, with no input from common sense. And it, it, it defies logic why the governor did it. Uh, my understanding is that we might learn why he did it from the actual uh, impeachment inquiry. Uh, I hope that is the case. But there are so many facts in this impeachment inquiry that need to come forward, this report, that the taxpayers of this state deserve to know what's in there. And honestly, how can we trust the incoming administration if we don't know what their role was in the last administration? What are your thoughts on Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul stepping into this new role as governor? Well, I mean, obviously we're both from Buffalo, so I know we're better than most pundits and, and political figures in, in uh, New York State. Uh, Kathy should not be underestimated as it comes from, um, you know, a lot of downstate uh, political leaders might think that she might not be up for a campaign for governor because she happens to be from western New York. Kathy Hochul is very tough. Kathy Hochul has got an incredible work ethic. She's tenacious. She's very, very ambitious. Uh, but I will say that Kathy Hochul has to justify, what has your role been these last eight years? Because, you know, when I'm here in Buffalo and I, you know, pick up the Buffalo news and it's just, they salivate all over Kathy Hochul about how powerful she is and how big a role she has and how she serves as the right hand of the governor. But then anywhere else you travel, it's the distance and the chasm between the governor and lieutenant governor where she's you know, some kind of cheerleader or goodwill ambassador for the administration. So what, what has it been? And what prepares her for the job of leading New York if she has just been a goodwill ambassador? So I, I think that she has a lot to prove uh, here. Um, I, I, I don't intend uh, to have uh, any sort of honeymoon period. We're going to be just as tough on uh, the incoming Hochul administration as we've been on the Cuomo administration because something tells me the faces aren't going to change all that much. I mean, just because the governor changes doesn't mean all the people running the different agencies that have potentially blood on their hands, that have a wrongdoing that, that has gone on here for the last year. I mean, this, the, the culture of corruption in this Cuomo administration, this stain needs to be wiped off of our state flag forever. Forever. And we deserve balance back to our government, we deserve honesty back to our government, and we deserve common sense again for the taxpayers of this state. Does this change the tactic for the upcoming election next year? I don't think so. Not from the Republican perspective, because our candidates, including our presumed nominee, uh, Lee Zeldin, congressman from Long Island, has been traveling up and down the thruway, all 62 counties, taking a message of just what I said. Let's restore balance to New York. Let's restore common sense to New York. Let's make this state a place where people don't want to talk about leaving in the next year to two years or as soon as they hit retirement, but they want to stay here and keep their family together. And businesses want to talk about bringing jobs to New York, not figuring out how to get the hell out of New York because it's too expensive to do business. We need a culture change in the state of New York, and Congressman Lee Zeldin, as our next governor, can bring that. I know, um, back to the sexual harassment stuff, in a lot of the reports it said that part of the reason that the governor was able to get away with this was because of the culture in Albany that enabled that behavior. We also know that it's not just the governor, there's been other politicians, uh, not only in New York, but across the country, who face similar allegations. What do you think needs to change from a cultural perspective in government that we don't keep seeing cases like this? Well, well, let's face facts. The governor was a dictator. The governor ran our state government by fear and, uh, and punishment. People were afraid to speak out when they disagreed because they felt that he would go out to try to ruin their careers. I mean, I think it was one of his staffers that was quoted in an article said, you know, that they had two speeds. And one of the two speeds was killed. 
I mean, that is how Andrew Cuomo viewed his role. He, 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 he declared in press conferences, I am the government. He had lost touch with reality. And I think he had lost touch with you know, his own mental well-being in these last, this last month or so as the, 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 the noose tightened and, and, and the room got smaller and his allies fled because he no longer was the person that was feared. The emperor had no clothes. And they didn't, he didn't have that bully tactic anymore. Uh, and I think that that kind of draws the curtains open for, and, and draws some sunlight into the state capitol for the first time in a decade. Because, you know, anyone on any side of the aisle, whether it's, you know, friendly Democrats I talk to just, uh, you know, in polite conversation, they don't say a good word about the governor before any of this. And because he is a bully. And now that bully's been defeated and we are going to move on. But we have major disagreements on public policy. You know, major disagreements on the future of the state. And that's what, you know, we're going to continue to do. Uh, as, as, as Kathy Hochul, you know, ascends to the governorship, we are going to hold her accountable every single step of the way. I challenge her right now to answer questions about what her role and responsibility has truly been these last eight years. You know, has it been a goodwill ambassador or have you been a trusted aide in the room making decisions? You talked about accountability, yet uh, Tom Reed, who uh, admitted to sexual harassment, has been allowed to finish out his term. Why? Where's the outrage on the Republican he, side about that? He gave up his entire political career. The man was running for governor, and he uh, announced he wasn't seeking re-election. He's, he's basically disappeared from the public dialogue, and he was someone that star was on the rise. Uh, you know, if, if Tom Reed had resigned, the district would just have sat empty for the next year. And the constituents of that district would not have a, a vote in Congress. So I, I don't, this is a total apples and oranges scenario, but there's someone within 72 hours of being accused of something admitted to it. I still don't see an admission out of Andrew Cuomo. I have watched that soliloquy he delivered today, that monologue he carried on and on about all the great he did and how maybe generationally he made people feel uncomfortable and he was sorry for that, but not sorry that I, you know, touched people inappropriately. He didn't admit to the things that he's basically been proven to have done. So I, I, I think the governor has been a wild hypocrite this whole way, and, uh, and now he's gotten his comeuppance. Any other questions? Thanks, everybody, for coming out today. Really appreciate it.